Hey everyone, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and I want to continue my series today on the practice problems for the GED math test. Uh, but this time I'm going to talk about geometry. Um, if you haven't checked out my videos earlier, there's a couple on basic math problems, but there's still good practice problems. So check that out. And uh, for this, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I have a geometry problem here for a composite figure asking, what is the area of the figure below? So for me, you know, when I see composite figures, which are basically just you know, oddly shaped figures that aren't like a square or a rectangle, I always try and find a way to kind of slice it up into two regular sized shapes. And I'm going to go ahead and use that problem or that approach to solve this one. So I'm going to go ahead and actually divide this one up by drawing a line here. So now I have kind of this area here and then this area here that I need to find. If I can find the area of each of those, then I can add them together and get my total area. So let's go ahead and do that. So I need to find the measurements of the missing sides here in order to properly figure that out. So for this square on the left, I have, or shape on the left, I have the base here, which is 15, but I need to find the height. So the height I can see um, if I look at my right side here, the entire height from top to bottom of the big one is 20. And I have this slice of the side, which is 15, which means the rest of it has to be the difference between the two. So 20 minus 15 is going to be 5. All right. Now I know I have a 5 by 15 rectangle, which I can find the area of. Area is length times width, so 5 times 15 is going to be 75. All right, I found one of my areas. Now let's do the same for the other one. So this other taller rectangle here, again, I know the, the height or length or however you want to call it is 20. I need to find the width. So the width I need to figure out because the whole top side of that shape is 25. But I just need this, this certain part up at the top here. So if the whole thing is 25 and the left hand slice is 15, the right hand slice has to be the difference between the two, which means this is really 10. So I'm actually going to go ahead and cross that out just so I'm not confused. I know that's 15 and I know that's 10 for a total of 25. So now this huge tall rectangle is really a 10 by 20 rectangle. And I know area is length times width, so 10 times 20 is 200. I now know the area of each of those. I can add them together to get my total area, which is 200 plus 75, or 275 feet squared, because all area units are square units. And so there's the area of my composite figure. All right. So let's take a look at a couple of other examples that you may see on the geometry section of questions on your test. So I have a, another smaller word problem. It says the area of a frisbee in the shape of a circle, which is really key, is 19.625 square centimeters. What is the radius? So this is a problem involving the area of a circle, which is one of your formulas on the formula sheet. So I recommend checking out that formula sheet to know what the formula is. Area of a circle is pi r squared. And so usually when you see problems like this, they'll tell you to use 3.14 for pi. And this is no different. We're going to use that number. But let's fill in the numbers that we know and solve for the ones we don't know. So 19. 625 is the area that's equal to 3.14 times r squared. So we need to figure out what r is, the radius. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by pi. And so if you don't know what it is on the left, which that's a pretty tricky number, um, use your calculator. It ends up when you do that, 19.625 divided by pi, you get 6. 0.25, which is r squared. And so now you need to figure out what r is. So if you have r squared to get regular r, you take the square root of both sides. Square root, square root. And again, I would recommend using your calculator. Square root of 6.25 is 2.5. 
which is R. And so the units are going to be centimeters, so we'll just add that at the bottom for completeness, but your radius of that frisbee is two and a half centimeters. So it's a good application of the formula itself, but kind of done in reverse. Let's go one more example, and we will be done. All right, so for the set of numbers that are shown here, list the mean, median, and mode. And so, yeah, um, apparently mean, median, and mode is part of the geometry section, but, you know, these are good problems to do. Um, there actually are definitions of those on your formula sheet as well. I recommend checking them out and reading them. But um, let's go ahead and get started. Mean is average, which means I need to take all these numbers, add them up, and divide by however many there are. Um, so if we do that, um, let's see, 7 plus 4 plus 8 plus 3. You add all those up, you're going to get 40. And there are 8 numbers in total, 8 different ones, so 40 divided by 8 is going to be 5. So my mean or average is 5, all right? The median. Median is your middle number when organized from least to greatest. So I need to put these in order from smallest to largest. Uh, let's do that real quick. You got 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, uh, let's see, 7, 8, 9. Sounds about right. And I need to figure out which one is the middle. And so basically what I do is I kind of you know cross them off one at a time on each side. So that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. Now there's two in the middle here. Sometimes you get two middle numbers. When that happens, all you do is add them up and divide by two. In this case, they're the same number, which means they're both the same. So your median is gonna be four. All right. And if you add them up and divide by two, you get eight divided by two, which is right back to four. Now the mode, which is the easiest of them, in my opinion, is the most. Mode means most, which number occurs most often. In this case, there are actually two of them, which can happen. It is three and four, because as you can see, there are two of each of those, and all the other numbers only occur once. So my modes, plural, are three and four. So. When you get to problems like these, I hope that you kind of break down the problems. If there's a formula involved, definitely use your formula sheet. Um, even for ones that have to do with mean, median, mode, make sure you check it out on your formula sheet for the definition of what they are. But take each problem one at a time, and if you can, break it into different pieces and solve. And I hope this helps. Make sure you check out part two of the video and other ones to come. If you have any other questions or you need assistance and you live in the Palm Beach County area, visit our website at GEDS.com to find a location near you and sign up for classes.